All right, Lantern Rite is over. I am so late to the party, but late is better than never. And so we've got a video to cover. You know, aside from all that rewards drama and how little we got compared to Honkai Starial, this patch I thought was quite nice. Which honestly isn't saying much since I like almost every event. Yes, I'm simultaneously very easy and difficult to please. This year's Lantern Rite story was a little more straightforward. We had a lot of character developments for the Adeptus, Mountain Shaper, and Moon Carver got NPC'd. If anybody wanted to make them playable, then rip. The story mostly focused on Gaming's conflict, as if we were playing out a story quest for him. This is kind of like Nilu's story quest all over again, except it's a playable character going through all this struggle. Anyways, family relationship issues are relatable. They're probably one of the most realistic experiences for the audience, but... I do find it odd that we've done this twice now. The story this time around is a lot more simple than past Lantern Rites, I remember. We flew kites, we helped a guy resolve his daddy issues, and we got some bonus content at the end with Fontaine characters. By the way, just on a side note, they really just added Navia and Chlorine in the Lantern Rite together for seemingly no reason. Is this the new Nguan Beidou? Last year we had Ningguang and Beidou together, this year it's Navia Clorind. It's kind of odd that we seemingly have two consecutive Geo-Electro pairings like that. I'm starting to notice a pattern here. I absolutely love that Farina and Hu Tao's friendship is canon now. I swear, I kept seeing fan art of those two together, but now it's actually in the game. It's always nice to see your two favorite characters interact. I don't know where the initial idea came from, but these two just look so nice together. Shen Yun was also pretty good in this event. I haven't played Shen Yun's story quest yet, so I don't have too much experience with her right now, but the event really showed off a more humble and funnier side of her, which I really liked. You know when you started out Genshin for the first time and went through the Liyue Archon quest? Cloud Retainer was supposed to be this crazy, unapproachable, hostile bird lady who genuinely wanted to destroy Liyue Harbor at one point. There were moments I just found her flat out annoying, so it's nice to see her open up in recent patches. Even during last year's Lantern Rite, there were noticeable changes in her personality, so this is a process that is finally paying off. Now, let's talk about Gaming, who is effectively the main character of this event. I'll go over my thoughts on him. Gaming is a really cool character. Initially, he gave me Bennett vibes, but without the bad luck. I was not expecting this guy to give us an elaborate family backstory. I was not expecting him to show us the more insecure sides of him and to get all emotional and hug his father at the end, like, wow. First off, can we just have a round of applause for the animators? They gave us a hugging animation in the game. Prior to the scene, I could count on one hand the number of times anybody has hugged in Genshin Impact. There was the webcomic with Kali and Amber, then there was Eula and Amber in the Avalanche cutscene, which wasn't even a real hug per se. And then there was the text of Jet and Traveler hugging at the end of her world quest saga. Okay, so hear me out guys. I think we all have the right to demand more hugging animations now. Or is it just me? They couldn't bother to actually animate Jet hugging the Traveler, but they did animate it for a 4-star character in a temporary event. Like, dude, Hoyo is trolling us. This is some incredibly underrated trolling. So, if you want to help me with engagement for the YouTube algorithm, do tell me that you want to see more hugging characters in-game. I don't think I'm the only one who wants to see more of this, right? Alright. Now, about the story of Gaming in the event, I'm starting to notice a pattern with story events. In the previous patch, we similarly had Chevrus release, with the Muskets of Roses story giving her a major role. To go back even further, and there was Thelxie's Fantastic Adventures, which had Fremenet as our featured 4-star, and if you were to go back even further, there's Kirara and in the Genius Invocation TCG Tournament event. Hoyo in recent months have increasingly relied on events to showcase 4-star characters. In earlier stages of Genshin's lifespan, most 4-star characters had a hangout, or they had a story quest. Now, it's clear that Hoyo currently can't match the release of hangouts faster than they release new 4-star characters, so their solution is to just use the events to do the job when a new character comes out, and 
Honestly, I kind of understand this decision since Hangouts have always felt to me like one of the more underwhelming part of the game's permanent story. This was clear during the Interdarshan Championship event. They released Kaveh's Hangout soon after, but Kaveh's Hangout just couldn't compare to the Interdarshan Championship. That event, I think, is the clearest case, which shows that using an event story to flesh out a character just produces better results. But of course, the issue with this, as I'm sure many of you already know, is that these events are temporary. This is just another nice event that is now added to the YouTube playlist of event stories for anybody who missed out. We're kind of reaching a point where the volume of event-based stories is so high that people are unlikely to have the patience to go through all of it. I mean, if they're a new player who fell in love with the game hard, then sure. Maybe they'll binge through the events, just like how I binged through 700 episodes in One Piece in like two months. Or if they're a returning player with only a small amount of events to catch up. Since this is a character-oriented game that relies on character marketing, people are going to want to seek out events important to their favorite characters. Especially Albedo. Outside of events, he's got almost nothing. Albedo thrives on events, from the original Festering Desire event, to the Imposter Albedo event, and even fun extras like the Windbloom Festival and Iridori Festivals. If you want everything Albedo, as a newer player, then be prepared to watch over 10 hours of YouTube replays. Hoyo, from my perspective, has relegated characters like Gaming, Kirara, and Chevrus into a second class. A second class tier of characters that doesn't have any presence in permanent content, that has little to no visibility after their respective events, that is doomed to irrelevance since their big moment has passed in their respective events. Now, if any of them come back and play a big part of a future story, then all of this changes. With the way things stand, Gaming is doomed to fade into obscurity since there's nothing he has going for him outside of Lantern Rite. For older players, he'll eventually be overshadowed by newer events. And for newer players, there's no visibility for him in the game. There's not much that would attract newer players to take an interest in him. So, Gaming, honestly a great character. A character who has gotten more shine than most 4 stars in recent memory, isn't built to last. Maybe he'll come back and get featured in an Archon interlude like Shinobu or Yanfei, or he'll show up as a recurring character in newer events, but as things stand right now, he really doesn't have enough to stay popular long term. Of course, this problem goes beyond Lantern Right, but it's worth talking about since there's an emerging trend of 4 stars being one-hit wonders like this. Overall, I think this Lantern Right was good. The character interactions between Shen Yu and Shen He was amazing, I also liked the end with the Fontaine cast talking to the Liyue cast. It was a good way to establish Fontaine even further, and even expand certain character dynamics in the main story. Obviously, characters released later in the game cycle won't have as much time and opportunity to build themselves up the way earlier characters do, so they're making up for it by giving them longer Archon quests and multiple consecutive events to connect with the other nations. Of course, I still have to say that I enjoyed last year's Lantern right better. Last year just had the entire cast of Lyra gathered. Many of the characters weren't well acquainted, so it was a great world building moment where the cast acted as an interconnected community rather than a collection of isolated individuals. We had a music performance. We had Hu Tao rapping. The celebratory atmosphere wasn't as great this time around since it was a narrower, more isolated story. Even the final chapter in Chen Yu Vale was a bit out of the way. I mean, it's fine though, because I still enjoyed it, so it is what it is. Those are my thoughts for this year's Lantern Right. I hope you don't mind the more chaotic commentary this time around, I'm mostly just speaking what's on my mind. So like the video if you liked it, comment if you want to let me know that I am not alone for demanding more hugging scenes in the game. We are back to making videos again, and it feels good to upload this one. So with that said, thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.